Merry Xmas, Fluff Punks. The X stands in for whatever you want to be merry about. My name is RK, and it's a common tradition for those who believe in Santa Claus to leave out milk and cookies for him overnight on Christmas Eve. But for those who wish to please a different holiday spirit, you need to leave out the schnapps. Socialist demons whipping poorly behaved children is culturally effed. Before we begin, a quick reminder that we now have official Culturally Aft t-shirts in both Fluff Punk and Vintage Fursuit print by JC Landecker. Order now for you or the Fluff Punk in your family this holiday season. A belief in Santa Claus is very common for young children in the West. The jolly old elf encourages generosity, joy, hope. It builds excitement and anticipation in the hearts of the young. According to the common myth, he knows when you're awake or sleeping, and he manages to keep track of good and bad children and gets to every household all over the world in a single night. When I was growing up, the bad children were to receive coal in their stocking. In recent years, however, a European myth has been undergoing a resurgence in popular culture. He is one of Santa's helpers, but not one you want to cross. So be sure to stay in Santa's good books, because otherwise you'll have to deal with the Christmas Krampus. Krampus is a Central European myth about a half-goat demon who punishes the naughty children in the holiday season. He is the cause of early winter nightmares, a reminder for the children to stay good. Sometimes he takes away the toys that Santa's brought them and replaces them with coal. Sometimes he beats them with bound birch sticks. And the truly terrible children are taken away in a wicker basket on his back or chained together to march into the Krampus's lair in the underworld. He is usually depicted with black or dark fur and large goat horns, sometimes has a humanish goblin face and sometimes a much more anthropomorphic goat face. He also wears bells, which are said to ward off competing demons. So even if he's there to scare your kids, at least he's doing some good. December 5th is the night for Krampus, or Krampusnacht. Krampusnacht. I also apologize for my horrible pronunciation of Krampus this whole episode. It's just gonna happen. The Krampusnacht precedes St. Nicholas' feast day on December 6th. There's also Krampusloaf, or the Krampus Run, which is a schnapps-fueled marcher parade with 500 years of tradition. The marchers dress as Krampus in traditional wooden masks. In the 19th century, plastic devil masks were used, but are now frowned on as cheapening the ritual. Recently, artisans and traditionalist groups have reinstated wooden masks and high-quality costumes instead. The myth comes from pre-Christian traditions in Germany, Austria, Bavaria, Northern Italy, and Switzerland, also known as the Alps. Many scholars theorize that the Krampus myth may have evolved from or is related to satyrs and fauns from the Greco-Roman stories, or the pagan horn god of Northern and Eastern Europe. We talked about in previous episodes on how Christianity came in and altered many of these traditions to maintain their own mythology and to more easily convert locals. We also talked about the devil and the graphic history of the goat-headed Satan. Some go as far as to attribute Krampus's chains as a Christian symbol of entrapping the devil and to affiliate Krampus and Satan. Especially when depicted with Santa, does this look a lot like God and the devil. Although here, they aren't enemies. They work together on a very similar job of encouraging young children to behave and inspiring wonder and awe. They kind of remind me of like, action figure versions of good and evil. Krampus's image persisted in greeting cards of the early 19th century where he was depicted in a much more fun and cuter way. Very often depicted alongside Santa wishing your family a happy Krampus. Comparatively, Krampus tradition is similar to Mary Lewid, a Welsh folk tradition of dressing up under a white sheet and a horse skull, and going house to house singing songs for entry into homes to drink, party, and scare children. Or in Japan, there's the Namahage, a knife-wielding ogre oni who goes house to house on New Year's Eve to punish lazy or naughty children. Namahage, like Krampus, is celebrated with wooden masks and a march. You're supposed to give them mochi if they visit, and newlyweds must host them in formal attire offering food and sake. In the mid-1930s, Puritan groups and the fascist Austrian government tried to ban Krampus. They tried to censor him, outlaw him, even labeling him as a socialist. He was symbolic of the old world and a poor role model too scary for children. What would you do if neo-fascists came for your fluffy costume, telling you it was inappropriate for children or unpatriotic? What if the war on Christmas became the war on furry? 
Krampusnacht is still celebrated today, and these celebrations are moving out of obscurity and across Western culture. We have events in major cities like the Krampus Ball or Krampus Fest. It makes me wonder if the Krampus myth perhaps influenced 1957's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. There's also the film Krampus from 2015, and it received pretty good reviews, unlike the half dozen or so other really terrible Krampus-themed straight-to-DVD movies that have come out in the past few years. You can also find Krampus in The Binding of Isaac and Don't Starve. My first encounter with the goat spirit was in 2004's A Very Venture Christmas, but Krampus has been on Scooby-Doo, American Dad, Stephen Colbert, The League, Grimm, Lost Girl, and a handful of holiday commercials. Currently in production as of this recording is Auntie Claus by Kevin Smith and Happy Krampus co-produced with the Jim Henson Company. After doing research into the myth and such, I'm more convinced than ever that just about Everything from the Christmas holiday is stolen from other, much more fun-sounding pagan festivals. Don't let the holidays cramp your style. You'll look devilishly good in these new tees, both representatively fluff punk or the seductively striking Landecker print. Order them today at culturallyeft.com. What do you think about Krampus? Should we reintroduce him into the Christmas myth? <laughs> Christmas myth? Let us know down in the comments, and Russ will respond to some of those comments on the next Eft update. Have a great holiday. I have been your host, RK, and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Rusty Shackelfer, and unfortunately, Tauntauns were harmed in the filming of that episode of Culturally Eft. If you're looking for someone to blame, they're on this list. And for your donation of a dollar a day, you too can help support the Tauntaun Sanctuary so that no more Tauntauns need to suffer for furry facts. I have been Rusty Shacklefur. Like, subscribe, share for more Tauntaun humanity.